let's try to dip it. Level 1 in the middle. And then if we fully dipped it. Yeah, it worked. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use this water level sensor without an Arduino. The first step here is of course we need to have a sample water where we can dip our sensor and check the voltage readings. I have here a probe with 5 volts output so I will now put the supply so that we can start checking. And I also have here a multimeter. So we can check the voltage output of our sensor. Now it's on. So the negative of the probe is connected on the negative. Then the positive is here. I will just put the another, another probe here on the sensor output. This is an analog output. So the voltage will be on a certain range. Let's turn on our meter. So now it's in DC. Now let's put it here. I, pull, I will put it here so that I can start checking the voltage level. So maybe I can put it here like that. So I'm now checking the, the signal pin. So it will start around 2 millivolts. Let's try to dip it on the upper part so it became 1.1, 1 .1, some, somewhere 1, 1 volt. I will go in the middle. That's around 1.3. And if I dip it on the lower lowest level, it's around 1.7. Since I will not be using an Arduino, I have to look here on my bin. What is the appropriate chip that I will use? And that will be this, an LM399 or a quad comparator. A comparator is an electronic device in which you can compare two voltage levels. It has a negative input and a positive input commonly known as well as inverting input and non-inverting input. The output of a comparator is open collector. You can imagine that as a switch. You can think of that as you have a switch here inside that is connected to the ground. So let's put the supply here as well which is volts we can connect an LED here so that will indicate the difference between these two voltage levels this will be open if the non-inverting input is higher than the negative so let's say this is 4 volts and this one is just 2 volts that will be open but if it's reverse, if this is 2 volts and this is 4 volts, this will become shorted, making this LED turn on. An LM399 has 4 of these. Let me now build the schematic. Here is now our schematic. As you see, I'm utilizing three comparators here on the LM339. One of the comparator is unused. So I have three levels here in which will represent the, on the three voltage levels that we set for our water level sensor. Previously, we measured one volt for the minimum. Then the middle will be around 1.3 volts and then the the last level will be 1.6 volts. This is the one that we measured earlier. And then, this, these resistors, I still have to calculate it and tweak during the process when I start to work on the, when I solder later, the resistors. And this will be our indicator. There will be three LEDs that is corresponding on the outputs. Like, this output will be in corresponding with this input. And then this output will be here. They are actually in pair. By the way, before I forgot, these are the combinations of the voltage divider that I use to achieve these different voltage 
levels. These are the thresholds of our comparators. We'll now build the actual circuit of this schematic and let, let's see how it will behave. I will be using this prototype board as well as my surface mount resistors for our circuit. This is a bit big so I have to cut it because you, only, you will only utilize one line for the comparator IC. Or I may, I may will cut it in this area until this area. That should be enough for our application. I'm now done with the circuit and as you see, there are no resistors here, only LEDs and the LM339 quad comparator. The resistors are at the back because I use surface mount resistors, those tiny resistors there. I think you see it. Those are the resistors. It's a bit messy but it's neat if you look in this side and it's a small. So let's now try to hook it on our sensor. I will remove the headers here on the sensor because I want to fit this here. So I cannot fit it, I cannot make them one piece if these headers are here. So I will just remove it. Now that I removed the headers, I can now fit this together to become one piece. So luckily, the holes are kind of the same size, so I can match them together. Like that. So I have a screw here and a nut, and I will fix that. The screw is a little bit big, but it does the job. So now it's time to put the wires on these three connectors here, on the, these three the supply, the positive, the negative, and then the signal. So we can now test the circuit if it will work. Now I'm done, I'm done making them once. So yeah, you see the wiring here, still messy. And I just added a buzzer. And then I, the power is coming from a USB cable. So let's try to dip it. Level 1 in the middle. And then if we fully dipped it. Yeah, it worked. If you find this video helpful and interesting, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.